Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome along. Nice to see some uh, familiar faces in the audience, uh, and as well as some new ones, which is uh, fitting for the, the news that we're sharing uh, today. Uh, with a wide range of vehicles, many with a performance pedigree, uh, we're proud to announce today that we're officially launching uh, the Ford Performance as a brand to the Australian and New Zealand markets. Now, our mission is clear. Uh, it's innovation through performance. And we want to showcase our passion for innovation, and we also want to bring performance uh, that you can use uh, to more customers. Now, Ford Performance globally focuses on developing innovations and technologies uh, in aerodynamics, in light weighting, in electronics, in fuel efficiency, and also powertrain performance. And we look to broadly apply those across the total Ford vehicle lineup. Now, we have an extensive uh, range of Ford Performance vehicles in Australia and New Zealand, uh, including the Ford Mustang. Uh, the Fiesta ST, the Focus ST, uh, the Focus RS, and of course the Ford Ranger Raptor. Now in our first Ford Performance news of the day, uh, we're happy to share with you that the next generation Ford Fiesta ST is coming to Australia and New Zealand. Now this fun to drive, dynamic uh, and innovative hot hatch will arrive in showrooms uh, in the first half of 2019. Now, we've witnessed the appetite and passion uh, for the Fiesta ST in our lineup, and it shows the depth of the exciting vehicles we're bringing to market, from this compact hot hatch uh, all the way through to the Ranger Raptor. Now, let's talk about the Ranger Raptor. Now, earlier in the year, we unveiled the Ford Performance version of one of Australia's most uh, popular vehicles, uh, bringing together the nation's desire for high-performance, personalised vehicles uh, with the practicality uh, and usefulness of a four-door pickup. Now, the global development of this highly anticipated vehicle was led by Ford's 2,000-plus strong Ford product development team based right here in Australia in conjunction with Ford Performance. And it's a vehicle we're really quite proud of, and I can't wait for it to arrive in the showrooms uh, later this year. Now, we're also honoured to announce that that same Ford Performance Ranger Raptor coming to Australian roads in September will be the official recovery vehicle for supercars. Now, in this role, the, the Ranger Raptor will use its on- and off-road capability to support the series. Now, with Ford Performance officially launching in Australia and today being the Mustang's 54th birthday, we're also announcing a new chapter in Ford Australia's commitment to the motoring enthusiasts. Those among us who live and breathe cars, motoring, motorsports, and wear it as a badge of honour. Now, throughout Ford's history, uh, we've been a brand that's bettered itself through competition. Henry Ford won the world's first motor race back in 1901 in Michigan, and he knew the exposure and the publicity would prove his motor vehicles were superior to the competitors. And still today, Ford is not afraid of competing at the highest level. chills down my spine. Hopefully it might do for you in the audience. Um, we know that fueling the passion of motoring enthusiasts is important. So from 2019, the Ford Mustang will race in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, joining our global family of racing as we strive to bring innovation through performance to every Ford vehicle. Now we're thrilled to have the 2018 Mustang and the Ranger Raptor here today, both on show for the very first time in Australia and on sale later in the year. The Ford Mustang is one of Ford Performance core models. It's a global icon, 
It's the most popular sports car, not only in Australia, but also in the world. Now, Supercars Australia is synonymous with intense competition, high performance, and has global businesses and teams sparring wheel to wheel. Now, it too is changing, evolving as a dynamic business and series. Now, it looks to reward its fans, just as Ford looked to Australians to gauge what they want to drive, own, and experience. Now, Ford Australia and Ford Performance will partner with DJR Team Penske and Tickford Racing in the homologation of the Ford Mustang into the 2019 Supercars series. Now, we've been working with the teams to ensure they have the best technical support they need to make Mustang a winner. Now, both DJR Team Penske and Tickford Racing know how to win. They've proven it time and time again. And we're here to leverage the success of four performance from around the globe to see Mustang leading the pack. Now, what you can see around us is actually our four performance lineup, of which clearly we're very proud of. Now, the four, uh, four Mustang is no stranger to competition, and we can't wait to see it on the grid in 2019. And talking to supercars, I'd like now to introduce and welcome supercars CEO. Sean Seema. On behalf of everybody involved in the Supercars Championship, I'd like to welcome Ford, Ford Performance and Mustang. 2019 we'll see a Mustang return to the grid in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship for the very first time. Mustang has a deep and rich history in motorsport, and for us, we're very much looking forward to the teams preparing for their rounds in 2019. I'm sure as they start to prepare those cars, excitement and anticipation will continue to build. Graham, congratulations to you and your team on a fantastic launch of a fine range of Ford Performance vehicles here today. We know, as you do, that Australians and New Zealanders love performance vehicles particularly fast forwards. I would, if I may, uh, single out one fantastic vehicle here today. That is the Ranger Raptor. We're looking forward to that participating in the series as the official recovery vehicle for supercars. It's going to be a fantastic way to showcase what is a well-rounded truck. Graeme, welcome. I look forward to working with you, and we look forward to seeing you in 2019 and beyond. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Sean. I'd now like to welcome our Ford Australia's General Marketing Manager, Danny Winter, uh, Dick Johnson and Ryan Storey from DJR Team Penske, and Tim Edwards and Rod Nash from Tickford Racing to join us for a Q&A that will be facilitated by Marty Gunsberg. Thanks, Jazz. So we've got a couple roving mics. We have one um, over this side here, and we have one over there. If you just raise your hand to me, and we'll get a mic to you, and we'll, we'll continue to back up that way. So we have a first question. Just raise your hand so we can get a mic to you. Over here, PG. Graham, uh, up till now, you've been not a great supporter of supercars or the Mustang. What's changed? And how do you see this program working for you? And the, is it linked to the whole Ford Performance brand? Is that what well, that's what changed things? And is that what we're going to see? And how long is the commitment that you're giving to the teams for the motorsport, but also with the models going forward? Well, thanks for the question. Um, not that many people realise, but we actually continued uh, to support the teams quietly, uh, even since we made a departure in 2014. Uh, because the team and Ford have had a very um, strong and valuable relationship all that, all that time. But we needed to make some decisions back in 2014. We exited uh, not just supercars, but uh, South Australian national football, Rip Curl, because we needed to make sure we were concentrating on some pretty tough business decisions and make sure that we were working with our colleagues and our employees to, to move on. And since then, we've, we've launched you know, the, the Ranger. That's at number two in the market. The Escape, the Everest, the Mustang, the Raptor. Um, and we felt that actually the time was right uh, to get ourselves back into something that's frankly in our DNA, which is uh, motorsport. Um, but we needed to do that carefully, um, and it is absolutely around the four performance 
uh, brand. You know, we have racing in our DNA, but we have performance in our DNA, and making sure that sort of extends itself into the vehicles that we sell and are going to sell in the likes of the, the new Mustang and the new Raptor on an ongoing basis. Another question? Okay. So, sorry, Graham. How long is the commitment? Uh, we haven't put a time frame on it. Um, we believe it's an ongoing commitment. It's a partnership with the teams along with the supercar series. Um, and given that the Mustang is a vehicle that's around ad infinitum and has been around with such a rich heritage, we would expect to carry on for uh, the foreseeable future. And can we call DJR Team Penske and Tickford Racing now factory Ford teams? I, I think that we sometimes get caught up in, in the, the verbiage or the vernacular. At the end of the day, we're in a partnership with the teams, and that's between Ford Australia, Ford Performance, DJR, and uh, Tickford. Um, and quietly, we've been looking at what the options were. In fact, back in early 17, as a company in Ford Australia, we knew that we had an opportunity in front of us from a strategy point of view. We consulted with our Ford Performance colleagues in Detroit, to make sure that there was a feasible outcome that we could be happy with. Then we engaged late in the year with uh, both the teams and then finally with the supercars in the early part of the year to see how we could bring ourselves back into a motorsport. Um, so we're in partnership. Thanks. Graeme, Mike Sinclair, how are you? Good, thanks, Mike. Can you confirm that you're dumping the rest of the Fiesta range? Uh, well, we're here today to talk about, obviously, the Fiesta ST bought out of Germany. We will finish with the remainder of the uh, Fiesta range at a point in time uh, through the course of this year. Um, but it comes at a point in time also when we're about to launch the new Global Focus as well to extend our range there. So, you know, we believe that we have some pretty, uh, pretty strong vehicles to offer anybody who wants a smaller vehicle. But the reality is also that the market is changing. You're seeing less passenger cars and more SUVs and more pickups. In fact, you know, SUVs are now outselling passenger cars in some months, so it's really a reflection of what's happening in the market and, and what we have to offer from, from the global product lineup. Back to Mark. Um, Ryan Story and or Tim, Tim Edwards, or any of you really. Um, so you can tell us now, how far, to, how far down the track are you to designing a Mustang supercar, and when will one be ready to hit the track, please? It's fairly early days in terms of the design and development process. It's something the teams are actually doing in conjunction and jointly. Uh, we've, we have a, a very good understanding of fundamentally how the car will fit over the supercar's control chassis, and, and that's about as far as we've gone so far. So we've got a, a heck of a lot of work to do ahead of us, um, and we're hoping that we can meet the standard sort of deadlines and timetables that you see for homologating new vehicles. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's obviously been a lot of speculation about will the two-door car fit on the Car of the Future platform, and obviously that, that was part of the study that we had to do um, to get to this point in time. So uh, that work's been done now, but now the real work starts with, you know, working out the aerodynamics, etc., and that'll happen over the next few months. So will we see the batters as a demonstration, please? It's a bit too, too soon to comment on something like that yet if the car's ready perhaps, but uh, we've got a hell of a lot of work ahead of us to uh, get this thing where we need it to be. Paul Gover again. Sean, uh, Hi, as I read the regulations for supercars, uh, the rules say that you must have a four-door passenger car. Um, have you changed the regulations to allow two-door cars? Those when, uh, when are you changing the rules? Those regulations were changed as part of the Gen 2 program that runs through to 2021, so the vehicle is already eligible. So then looking at the future, do you see the category changing more towards Mustang style cars? Uh, and how would you feel about having a vehicle from another brand, um, which is also gonna be on sale as a competitor for Mustang later this year in the category, in addition perhaps to the ZB Commodore? Yes, obviously we can't speak for, or I can't speak for the other manufacturers involved, but we're certainly open for business. Uh, the more vehicles, the more diversity that we have, and the cars and the manufacturers only supports better racing. Uh, hey guys, uh, Tim Robson from Cars Guide. Uh, powertrain, uh, will the Mustang stay with V8? Will you look at uh, twin turbo V6? Uh, you run V6s uh, in the States? 
Well, I'll answer first, but really it's the team's expertise. So, so the, the vehicle will be running around with a V8, um, and that's what's being worked on at the moment, along with all the other technical feasibility pieces. And what happens in the future obviously remains open. Um, we did look at other vehicles when we first thought about this, well before we even engaged with either the teams, excuse me, <coughs> or the series, but the Mustang I think was the right fit. Um, and its credentials in terms of V8, very, very strong. Perhaps you want to talk about perhaps the, the powertrain in a more technical sense, I don't know. So our, our focus is on Mustang, but we have a very competitive drivetrain with the, with the V8 and both of our respective teams have our own respective programs and uh, they're very competitive, so that's, that's what our focus is. 2019 is all about Mustang. Yeah, and, and really from a racer's perspective, um, the team's preference was to just do one change and so, you know, at least we can go into 2019 with the new aerodynamics package and we're not sort of confusing with what might have changed from a, from a powertrain point of view. So sort of from the racer point of view, you know, doing one thing at once is, is, is the preferable. Bruce? Yeah, sure. Um, is there a separation of responsibility for different areas between Tickford... DJR Team Penske and Ford Performance. Can we clarify what different parts of the Technical Alliance are actually doing? Well, the, the, the two principal engineers are Nathaniel Osborne from Tickford Racing and, and Ludo from uh, DJR Penske, and they're really setting the direction. Um, but the grunt work, I suppose, the best way to describe it, um, will be Ford Performance. You know, we're, they've got the, the resources to do the design and the CFD work, etc. but the sort of the the direction that they'll take will come from our respective chief engineers. Does this mean you'll be able to wind tunnel test this car in the state, say at the Penske facility before it's homologated to race in supercars? Uh, look, they're, they're technical discussions about what's allowed in the regulations, etc. So the primary focus at the moment is actually doing the the design work, you know, which is a huge project, um, and then the CFD work that follows on from that, and then obviously we work in conjunction with supercars from that point in time to go through the homologation process. Was there a, is there, was it important to you to get the FGX <coughs> off the grid, but keep Ford on the, on the grid with a, with a modern current car? Um, no, the, I mean the decision and ultimately the announcement today was more about the Mustang and, and it's what we call its fit. I mean, as an icon and what it's done in the past, it fits very nicely into uh, the supercars mould and with the conjunction with the teams we've had good history with. So it wasn't really about that. But at the same time, I mean, we've said very publicly that, uh, you know, the Falcon, the FTX has served um, the teams but us well as a company and it leaves that legacy we have anyway and that legacy is what I spoke about earlier on. It means that we have the engineers sitting in Australia who can then go do good things with Raptors and, and Rangers. So, you know, we honour the Falcon and, and respect what it gave to us and what it gives to us now, but we knew that the Mustang was the right fit. And it really wasn't about the timing per se between the vehicles, it was more about when we thought the Mustang was for the right timing into the series itself. Over to PG. Uh, Dick, how do you feel about this? You were saying to me a while ago that your future has always been about Ford. You've raced the Mustang in the past. Do you think it's going to work? How do you think the fans are going to react to that? I think this is a huge boost for supercars to have the Mustang come back into the series. Like I've been involved uh, with Fords uh, in the racing game since uh, the mid-70s and, and uh, I've never sort of wavered from that, Paul, to be quite honest. And uh, I don't see that happening in the future either, to be quite honest, because it's... Uh, it's a great icon of a vehicle and to get back into the Mustang and, and uh, I know damn well just how competitive uh, the, the Mustang is and, and will be in the future. And, and uh, the current Falcon has certainly served us extremely well in the past. Uh, last question. Sorry, just for the teams, I know it's a very basic question, but building off that, I mean, when there was a little bit of uncertainty about Ford's presence going forward, I mean, you mo both must be very happy that you're sticking with the Ford brand for the, for the fans who've, who've loved this brand for so long. I don't know, mate, but could you see me walking down pit lane with another badge? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right, Tim? No? We could... All right, great. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, thank you to everyone on Facebook Live for streaming in. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for more content over the coming days, weeks, and months. Uh, for everyone here in the room, we are going to move into some one-on-ones.
James over here in the white shirt has the schedule, so please see him if you'd like to put in some time for a one-on-one. -on -one. He also has an asset pack for you, so USBs with all the imagery, video, etc. Um, thank you again. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. That concludes today's event.